Hi guys, Ace here. Um, so yeah, a lot of people on DeviantArt, my DeviantArt, which is will be linked in the description as always, have been requesting uh, a tutorial on how I do the coloring and shading in, uh, you know, digitally. Uh, beforehand, before I start though, I'm going to have to warn you, the program I use is Adobe Photoshop Elements 2008. It is 11 years old. So, I honestly don't know if this is going to be of any use to anyone, but people asked for it, so here it is. So, uh, some of you may know that uh, my art style is a combination of traditional and digital. Right here, you can see the scan of the uh, pencil and pen uh, sketch I did of uh, my Poke Sona's face, Ace Spade the Pikachu. I'm probably going to end up turning this into another emoticon uh, afterwards, you know, give them a whole bunch of different expressions and maybe even use these, use them as the uh, icons or avatars or whatever for my next uh, Ask a Spade the Pikachu uh, video, which I've now, I think, accumulated enough questions to do. I just, I, I want to update the uh, the sprites or faces or whatever, because they're, the older ones are looking a little, you know, not as good as my current art style. But anyway, without further ado, let's just get started on this so as you can see there are a lot of messy eraser marks in my art when I start out so I'm gonna manually use the eraser brush tool to get rid of some of the bigger more obvious ones like right here there there's another one, and you get like that. You gotta be very careful not to erase things you don't want to erase, otherwise you'll have to hit the undo command. <laughs> I do that a lot. <laughs> you may end up seeing me do that in this video, although uh, this one doesn't have that many uh, eraser smudges, so there may be considerably less of that than usual. Anyway, I'm going to be try trying to be as careful as I can, as you should, if this is the method you intend to use, if it's even possible anymore. <laughs> Again, this program is very, very old. Uh, just another one around that edge there. And... Okay, um, starting to look good. I'm gonna want a smaller eraser tool just to get right in there. Yeah. Eh. Get rid of that little mark. Uh, there. And now I'm going to crop it. Make it, uh, more center, get rid of those bars at the top and bottom that we don't need. Uh, try to get it perfectly centered. That's good enough. Ah, damn it. That's the wrong thing. <laughs> okay, there we go. There. Alright, I'm gonna fit on screen, make it bigger. Now, I'm going to use, you see this, this tool here, it's called the Magic Wand uh, Select Tool. I, uh, I use this basically every time I draw, it is very handy. You just right click, add to selection on whatever you want to, anything that is uh, contained within dark lines, instant select on that uh, area. And it leaves the uh, the black lines that have already been drawn 
totally intact. It doesn't select those. Only the the empty white spaces. I'm going to do one on the outside too. And just so it, I don't uh, destroy some of the line, I'm going to contract the uh, select area a little bit, about 40-ish percent is usually pretty good. And now, just gonna hit the delete key. Instantaneously, most of the eraser smudges are gone. Just a few little spots here and there. I still need to clean up. Like that and that. Uh -huh, I see some uh, smudge here that, oops, a little too deep into the, uh, yeah, there's still a few smudges here and there. Just, yeah, around the edges, because I use both uh, pencil and pen. I, I pencil first and then I go over it with pen. The pencil shows through a bit and leaves those smudges, so that's why I always start out with erasers, tools to make those go away. Hmm. There we go. Yeah, I'm starting to lose some of the lines here. But that's okay. The, I, uh, I will show you a, a technique to uh, fix that as well. It's really quite simple. Uh, smooth this. Uh, oops. Okay, one more spot there. Another one right there. A little bit right there. Try to get it as smooth as possible. And because yeah, when it comes to the, to the select tools, you don't want to have any gaps in your lines. I actually see a gap right there. So you're gonna want to uh, fix those gaps which I will show you how to do in a moment once I finish cleaning up these eraser marks. Okay, I think we're good. I, the, uh, the brush tool here, you can adjust the size. I always go for four pixels because that's about identical to the width of the pen marks that, uh, that I that my uh, art pen makes. So, switching it to linear burn uh, tool here, I find uh, that gives a very dynamic, sharp uh, line, more so than the darken or normal does. So I use that, uh, that type of brush a lot. Really pops out. Uh, where else did I see a gap? Here we go. And right there. Oh, I see some more eraser smudge. Hold on. Here we go. There. Almost done. That. Oops. Here we need to uh, thicken this line just a little bit there. Just Get rid of a couple more eraser smudges. My face is really close to the screen now because my uh, distance vision is total crap. I've been told I probably need uh, glasses, but you know, <laughs> I'm managing so far. <sighs> okay, a little more there, and uh, that uh, just thin that line a little bit, and I think. Ooh. Oh, oops, a little more there. Yes, the erasing part takes a considerable amount of time, and this is a very basic drawing, like just a face. So if this were like a full size, you know, full body image or even multiple character image or something, this would take hours. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. But, uh... Just want to make this as smooth as possible there. I think that's good. 
And I always like to uh, save in between just in case, you know, my computer shuts down in a power outage or something or something messes up. I always like to save my work in between. Wait, that's not the folder I want. Hold on. In here, I'm going to save it into outlines. Just going to title this uh, Ace Smirk Face and Outline. There we go. Now we have a solid backup of what we have just made here. Now for the interesting part. Normally you'd think that you'd uh, use the fill tool to color, and I used to do that too. However, I came up with a better technique, one that uh, makes the lines look a lot cleaner and sharper. I'm using the select tool again, as you can see, the, uh, the magic wand select tool, the uh, tried and true tool for selecting specific spaces and I'm increasing the uh, the edge by quite a lot until it uh, oh, it's a little too far Let's track that spot there because that goes a little too deep into the ear everywhere else looks good now here's a neat trick. Again, I'm using an old program, so I don't know if this will work in other programs. However, I'm once again using the linear burn tool, but not at 100% capacity. Uh, I mean opacity. Only about uh, anywhere between 90 and 95 is usually good. And watch. See? It instantly makes the lines bold and st and stick out when you do it that way because the linear burn tool it amplifies the darkness of any uh, colors or lines that you you know click on, uh, over it that you use it on. Like for example this uh, line right here, it made it darker and more bold. If I just used the fill tool, it would have just looked smudgy and kind of gray. would have barely been able to see it. And now I will do the same for the cheeks. Just, um, three times for this should be enough. And red. I usually don't go, again, I don't go full uh, color or, you know, intensity because then that just looks a bit too harsh. I always leave it like a little bit, a little bit lighter, a little bit less, uh, and again, not full opacity with the brush. And there we go. There are his cheeks. Red Pika cheeks. Once again, going to do this for the rest of his face. This time with yellow because he is a Pikachu and Pikachu are yellow. And there you have most of his face, save for his eyes. Now the eyes, oh wait, hold on. A little spot I missed there because the select tool didn't uh, grab that. However, I'll show you another technique how to fix that. This time I'm going to switch to the darken tool and I am going to go to full opacity because I'm going to do that, use the uh, eye drop tool, which uh, takes a sample of whatever color you select. And I'm going to, there we go. You see, if I'd used the linear burn tool, it would have been like dark orange or something because it would have mixed with this black here. 
But the darken tool doesn't do that. It just uh, just makes it as dark as whatever color and shade you select to begin with and no more. Which makes it good for filling in gaps like this. And there's another one there on the little tip of the... There we go. Perfect. Uh, check to make sure there aren't any other gaps in the... I think we're good. Alright, now for a very interesting part, the eyes. You may notice that the way I drew his eyes and always draw his eyes now is not the same way as in the official Pokemon art. Usually, you know, a Pikachu's eyes are little circles that are mostly dark with a little white uh, dot in the middle. But after seeing uh, other people's art styles on DeviantArt and taking a liking to them, I prefer to kind of have it halfway between uh, the, the official art and more like, you know, what the art would look like for a human uh, anime character. You know, with the uh, black pupils and uh, colored iris. Ace is technically half human anyway, so <laughs> you can make that excuse <laughs> for why it works. There. I, uh, for the pupils, I always do full opacity, full maximum. Actually, no, wait. That wasn't, uh, as dark as it needs to be. Full, total black. Full opacity, full. There we go. Because you're going to want that to stand out from the hair and the nose and stuff. So, total black for the pupils. Now I am selecting the area for the irises. Doing this as usual, increasing the, uh, the uh, select area. And I'm going to show you a neat trick. Since uh, I always, Ace's eyes are uh, teal, blue, green, grayish. Selecting that a little more into the green. There we go. Going back down to that. Uh, not full opacity. Now we have the start of his uh, irises. Just looks flat right now. However select a much lighter, uh, brighter uh, spot on that palette. I'm going to select the airbrush uh, or soft brush tool. I'm going to switch to the uh, brush type to vivid light. I'm going to decrease the opacity to about 40%. And now watch this. Suddenly, his irises have some dynamics. Do a little bit more, one more time, just at the edge. And now I'm going to do something very similar, only the opposite. I'm going to switch this back to linear burn. Decrease the opacity a little bit more. And at the top here, making it darker. This gives his irises uh, a very dynamic, you know, gradient look. Now, uh, I don't know if any of you, uh, how many of you would uh, use that technique to, for the irises. You might just want something more basic, or you might want something that's actually uh, not, you know, vertical, but more, you know, uh, circular, like it. And there's a way to do that, too. I do that for like Sith eyes. Uh, maybe I'll, if anyone wants to see that, I could probably do a separate tutorial for that. However, now for extra flare, lens flare to be specific, I'm going to give his eyes a bit of sparkle. For this, I'm going to use the pin light tool. Turn the opacity up to about 95. 
select a smaller uh, brush tool. And now watch. There we go. I'm trying to make these as symmetrical as possible. One right there, one right there. Now a somewhat bigger one right about here and right about there. And as you can see, suddenly his eyes have sparkle. Really starting to look like uh, detailed uh, eyes there. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of a teeny tiny gaps in this, so I'm just gonna do the uh, the darken technique again. There we go, and uh, there. Oops, a little, a little more. Uh, okay, I'm gonna switch to this one. That. There we go. Uh, maybe not. That's actually uh, interfering with the uh, the flare. So I'm gonna. There we go. Uh, that looks a little odd too. So I'll do that. Oh, there's another spot. There we go. And now we have. Uh, a flat color image of Ace's face with dynamic looking eyes. I'm going to save this again, this time as uh, it changes it from outline to flat color. Oops. Now we have both the outline and the flat color uh, version saved. In addition, usually at this point, I also create a uh, Photoshop uh, version uh, file so that if it shuts down, I can open it up at any point. There we go. And now for the part that people were asking for the most, the shading. Once again, the select, the magic wand select tool is your friend, assuming uh, whatever program you use has it. Is uh, no guarantee of that. But uh, if you do have it, it is amazing. Now you see for this, I'm once again using the linear burn and the uh, soft uh, brush tool. And I'm turning the opacity way down and the color to lightish gray because as I said with the linear burn tool it intensifies uh, dark colors so watch even just with the gray and the low opacity it makes a big difference you see what I just did there? That was a little bit too dark. So, yeah, the smaller the brush, the more intense the uh, the uh, effect is. So, I'm just gonna go around the edge here again with a smaller brush to give a bit more 3D effect to it. That's one another thing. A lot of you ask, how do I make it look so 3D? This is how I layer it. You know, start with big brush, then work my way down to smaller ones. Now do this again. And here we go. When you're shading, you also want to have an idea of where the light source is. I usually, for almost all my drawings, uh, I just sort of assume that it's up here somewhere, like in the top left corner of the screen, off screen, to keep things simpler. <sighs> Eventually I will have to experiment with other types of light sources, even multiple light sources, as I start uh, doing uh, mini, more mini comics and eventually even full comics. Because this works fine for just, you know, 
profile images and stuff, like port like portraits and stuff, but in order to do, to do full dynamic poses and stuff, oh, I'm gonna need to branch out. There, now I've done the nose. Now for the rest. Select everything else. I haven't selected yet except for the eyes. Gonna do this a couple of times. Now before I uh, work around the edges, there's another neat little trick I'm gonna show you. You see these wrinkles I put under his eyes here? You know, like he's, he's squinting, he's uh, smirking. It creates, uh, you know, wrinkles under the eyes. Watch this. You don't need it to be too deep. Just enough. And for the mouth too, because, you know, here we go, and I'll do it for the eyebrows, and now you can start to see we are having a little bit of a, uh, a shadow right on those wrinkles. And next, to emphasize the 3D-ness of his face, I'm going to put a bit of a shadow under his uh, nose, just like that, and under his hair. You're going to want to, oops, I keep forgetting to select that teeny little spot. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Magic wand tool is great, but it's it can be finicky sometimes. <laughs> if you don't hit just the right spot, here we go. There we go, and you're gonna want to remember which where the light is coming from. So the opposite side of where the light is coming from, you want to make the shadows deeper and darker. And now for the main part, the uh, shading around the edge of his face, starting with the. Uh, 300 pixel tool here and all the way around I should also mention with the linear burn uh, tool which I use the most um, whatever uh, it, how dark it uh, how much it darkens depends on how dark the uh, color you're already using it on is the darker that is like for example this black part as opposed to this yellow part, the more intense the linear tool will be. The linear brush, the linear burn. I'm going to make a larger brush. Here we go. Again, the biggest key to the 3D effect is using multiple sizes of the airbrush tool. Do a slightly bigger one and do it again all around the edges. Doing it more on one side than the other. I'm going to do a smaller one. And as you can see, the 3D effect is starting to take shape a little bit. It will more so as I continue this this uh, but basically this is the uh, the essence of getting that 3d effect you wanna and now you need an even smaller one all the way around the edge like that oops I'm actually gonna undo that I made a little mistake there you gotta be very careful very gentle very smooth with the, I'm using a mouse uh, I know a lot of people use like tablets and stuff I, I can't I can't use tablets or touch screens of any kind for whatever reason I, when I touch them they go berserk <laughs> I don't know I guess I produce some sort of weird magnetic field that screws up with touch screens or maybe it's the 
my fingers are just not but regardless I'm gonna use another one this size there we go another one there increase and again you see this in order to get that effect you gotta do this a lot you gotta little by little by little work at it with uh, different uh, brush sizes and opacities again there and again there and as you can see the 3d is already starting to take effect it's really starting to pop out now one more small brush ought to do it Right around the edge there. There we go. Uh -huh. All the way around. And I'm actually going to uh, add a little bit more uh, shadows underneath the uh, his hair and his nose. And there you go. You have uh, shading. That looks really, really 3D. <laughs> In fact, uh, just just for uh, due diligence, one more really big one around the edge here. Now you may start to notice that the more you do this, the darker it's going to look. To the point where it might start to look a bit too dark. However, um, hmm. Uh, the uh, now <laughs> this is where things get a little tricky because once you have dark meaning dark the select tools tools don't work quite as well but there are tricks to get around that it's gonna make the nose a bit more dynamic and his hair there we go uh, one more it's because now it um, how uh, much I shaded here and now the hair doesn't quite match. There we go. And I'm going to uh, this little edge here. Do another one of these. Even more 3D effect to it. Now you have this. Really starting to look 3D now, isn't it? Except there's a little spot here that I'm gonna wanna fix. Again, with the, uh, the dark, darken tool that I showed you. Make it very tiny so that it doesn't interfere with anything else. There we go. Oh, there's another spot there. Just gonna do that. There we go. And here you can start to see um, that little spot there is uh, distracting so I'm going to uh, there we go um, yeah here we go here, there just a couple of there didn't stand out as much and now you have a very 3d looking uh, Pikachu face. And again, just for due diligence, since it I uh, made it look a little bit dark, I'm going to go into the uh, adjust lighting tool here. Brightness and contrast. Increase the brightness a little bit and the contrast a little bit. Now it pops out even more. And since this is going to be a PNG file with no background, I'm going to do this. Delete the background. Uh, I may have mentioned this in my um, GIF animation video, but if you want to have uh, a file, a picture file with no background, you know, like where it's like transparent, it has to be a PNG. It won't work with JPEG. If you try to make it a JPEG, it'll just make it white. And just one more little uh, trick here for the uh, the whites of his eyes. A little bit of shading just around the edge, just to make them look round. 
There we go. Just around the edge. Just like that. I was kind of tempted to try to do a British accent for this, you know, for as an Art Attack parody, Neil Buchanan, but <laughs> it would be very bad, annoying, and might even offend some of my British watchers, so I'm <laughs> not doing that. Save that for the Let's Plays. <laughs> uh, actually, gonna one more time, just like there, just around the edge. There we go. And there you have it. A very 3D looking Pikachu face. Looks like you just, uh, you know, reach into the screen and grab it. <laughs> I'm going to save the Photoshop file again. And now I'm going to save this one more time as the final product. Just a smirk face. As a PNG. Always save as PNG, as I said. And there you go. Just let that, uh, there it is. There you have your uh, 3D looking Pikachu face with more complex uh, drawings the uh, the shading will be a bit more difficult obviously more complex but the general idea is still there I I chose Ace's Pikachu face because there's a variety of different colors and shades on a Pikachu's face to work with uh, to show you how each separate uh, color will yield a different result for the shading that you may need to adjust things a bit. But regardless, oh, hold on. Missed something. Again, good old darken tool here. Um, right there. There. <laughs> now, save it again. <laughs> It's, uh, it's irritating when you have a little spot that didn't that, that that stands out like that. It's distracting, so you're gonna want to try to fix those as much as possible. Again, I'll just save it all over again, and yeah, there we go. Load some with really big files. It takes a while to save, even with uh, my powerhouse of a computer of a desktop computer. Well, I know a lot of people use tablets or laptops which don't have nearly the processing power as a desktop computer does, which is another reason I prefer desktop computers. But I've rambled on long enough, so here you go. It's what you all asked for. So until the next video, whatever that will be, maybe it'll be the next uh, Ace Q&A video, or maybe it'll be more Let's Plays whenever I get together with that weird collector again. But regardless, until next time, keep a very 3D colorful Ace up your sleeve. Bye.